morning you guys welcome back to realty ride today we're going to be doing a uh, little video on both of our cars the air cool car versus the water cool car and we're going to find out which one is more expensive which one's more reliable which one's easier to drive which one's more valuable the water cool car or the air cool car you'll find out here in a few minutes Since 1948, Porsche has developed air-cooled rear-engine sports cars. Starting with the historic 356 models, and then later on in 1964, they developed the more powerful, iconic air-cooled six-cylinder 911. But because of displacement and emissions issues, in 1998 the 911 evolved and went water-cooled, starting with the controversial 996, continuing up to the current 992 variant. But was it an improvement? Which one is better? Let's find out. So first things first, the Porsche 911 has been around for a long time. And as you can tell, the iconic shape of both these cars are still relatively similar. This is a 1983 911SC G body. This is one of the original body styles that the Porsche 911 came up with back in the 70s and 80s. Um, this has the five mile per hour bumpers on it. Um, this is the short hood. The older models had the longer hood, and uh, people are doing a lot of retrofits now to make these new, older cars look even older, like the long hood versions. But this is a, a 1983 Cabriolet 911 SC. We've owned it for many years. It's a wonderful car. It's three liter. It's got about 180, 200 horsepower on it. It rides on 16 inch wheels. These are Fuchs wheels. These are original. We've had this car for a long time. We love driving it. It's a fabulous automobile. And the convertible tops, you know, are making a comeback. For a while there, they weren't as desirable as the Targas or the Coupes. But now they're making a uh, resurgence in terms of value and popularity. And people just are coveting the air cool cars so much. Here is the 2006 Carrera 997 variant. Carrera 4S, and this is a water cool car. This is the air cool car over here, and this is the water cool car. And this one has about 360 horsepower. It is a 3.6 liter engine, and it's water cooled. They're both horizontally opposed, which means there are six cylinders. One has fins on it, one is cooled by oil and uh, air, which is this car right here, and this one's cooled primarily by water, like any other car with the radiators. Look down below, you'll see two condensers, one on the left and one on the right. Like a little radiator condenser that you have in a normal, typical car. But you can see the stance on both cars is very similar to the way the 911s have been for many, many years. Just that iconic, beautiful shape. This one's riding on 19-inch wheels. We have Brembo brakes in the front, cross bill rotors, and I uh, don't offhand know what the tire sizes are. We'll do that in another video. But right now, let's just kind of walk around really quickly. And this has a, uh, a wing that comes up at about 55 miles per hour to, add, to, to give you added downforce when you're driving at speed. And this one has uh, a lot of technological advancements, not as many as a newer cars has. Let's kind of look through it real fast. I'll show you quickly. It has, uh, this is what's called the Chrono Package, and it has a sport button here that allows for the, the exhaust to open up to give you more of a resonance sound. It also has a much more luxurious interior, but you can tell it's still it's basically the same uh, five dial instrument cluster here in the front, left-hand side, Ignition switch. Here's the back of the car. Got little two little benches, just like the other 911. The sunroof. It's got Alcantara. It's beautiful, beautifully done. Really nice seats, leather seats. Let's show you the engine real fast. Car. Very simple. Not much to see. And then the air cool car. Let's go to the interior of this one. So this one doesn't have any traction control. Stability control, doesn't have power steering, 
that power brakes doesn't have anything that the 06 has it has nothing just complete mechanical capability and a very very and a very uh real driving experience so again as a five the original five five gauge cluster which has been like that since you know from the fur first 911 came out in 1964 has an old school stereo there that still works really well also leather sport seats but these are the older kind of leather sport seats not like the new one that we have in the uh, 99 in the uh, 997 but again little bench seats in the back one thing that porsche does well it doesn't change its design it keeps the, the basic elements and the foundation of these cars the same over the years and that's what keeps the value up it makes the cars more valuable because unlike Corvette, Mustang, uh, Camaro, other cars of that time period, they've evolved into totally different automobiles. Whereas the Porsches, yeah, they're different, of course, too. But the basic body style and the engine is still in the rear, still relatively the same. So here's the air-cooled engine. And the air-cooled engine, again, is cooled by air and oil. So here's that fan. This fan here generates air blowing it across the manifold and on top of the engine. That right there is the air conditioning condenser. You put oil in over there with the engine running. And this car has stainless exhaust, which I put on a few years ago. It's, I think it's a dance exhaust. And this one has carographic exhaust. I thought it was Akropovich, but actually it was carographic. They're both very cool stainless exhausts and they sound awesome. You have ample room for for stuff. Let's yeah, so see if I can open the two hands here. Like I showed this before in another video, it's got a lot of room, plenty of room. That's the uh, stereo over there that no one really uses anymore. The battery's right there underneath that Porsche container or lid rather. And on this car, it's the same thing. You got your trunk in the front. It's got ample room. Same. So here's the trunk in the front. It's a little dirty right now, a little messy, but batteries right over here underneath the cover. But what's it like to drive both these cars? Um, they drive dynamically different. So what is it like to drive the air-cooled car? So first of all, let's turn the engine off so you can see. You turn the engine on, left-hand side, just like the other car. It's been like that for day one. And this car, again, has no so-called nanny devices. No power steering, no power brakes, no stability management just have to know how to drive the car and if you see the roads here there's a lot of moss so I gotta be really careful because it has rained here the last few days and I don't want to get this car into a skid or a slip or a uh, drift of any kind and again I think I've mentioned this to you guys before in this car you always accelerate a little bit in the turn you never brake in the turn flip off the path let off the gas very cognizant of the fact that you got this big engine in the back and it acts like a pendulum effect and it can really uh, mess things up so in this car you just have to just be very conscious of it and it's not like it's hard to drive it's not it's a wonderful car it's got a five speed and right now I'm in uh, fourth gear applying brakes before the turn and then I make the turn third gear Again, giving a little bit of power here over the mossy roads so that I don't go into a drift and a skid. And again, here we go. By the way, they only made the Cabriolet 83 911C for one year. After that, they went into the Carrera mode. They made a lot of Carreras in 1984 and beyond. But they, in 1983, they only made 3,000 of these cars. So you can think that a lot of these cars over the years, because they weren't that valuable, they were wrecked and damaged. So there's probably not a lot left of the 1983 911SE vintage. So that makes this car a little bit more special and a little bit more 
valuable, I would think. So you see here, it's a great car to drive. It's uh, just for men, you just have to remember that this car had its idiosyncrasies. It's, the steering is, at speed is relatively docile, no problem. But at low speed, it's, you know, it doesn't have power steering, so it's a little bit heavier, harder to steer. Um, and it brakes, it brakes just great, you know, it doesn't um, have power brakes, it's just your standard, high, standard uh, mechanical brakes. It, the clutch is a cable clutch, it's not a hydraulic clutch. The later cars came with a hydraulic clutch, I think. Being very careful not to over rev this engine either, because remember in my last video, I did a video on over revs, which is, which by the way, guys, I got a lot of views on that, so I will continue to do more Porsche related content in the upcoming months. And there's a cop sitting over there waiting for me to speed away. It's just your typical old analog car, and uh, love it. At some point, you know, we're all going to go electric. We're all going to, you know, be driving different vehicles. And I hope that they're going to develop an electric motor for these older cars so we can continue to drive them. But it's not always about how fast you get there. It's, it's the driving experience. You know, I'm driving this beautiful country road right now and just enjoying life and enjoying talking to you guys and then sharing this experience with you all. Well, I mean, my first 1970 I, 911S that I bought Believe it or not, I bought a 1982 for $7,900. Bassett Pollock uh, Porsche dealership in Hermosa Beach, California. $7,900. Two years later, unfortunately, I wrecked it. But that's the way it goes. All right, so now we're going to drive the 997. So here we are in the 06 997 Carrera 4S and uh, it's all-wheel drive and as you can tell this car is got the um, it looks different similar but different than the air-cooled car this one's got a nicer sound to it they both have nice sounds I should I should say they both have nice throaty exhaust notes but this one has a little bit more of a finely finely tuned motor that's probably because it's newer, it's more refined than the older engines. The older engines were more mechanical and they kind of had, you can hear the cams and the chains and the drives and all the different things, mechanism moving and making all these different little sounds. Whereas this engine is more of a droney noise. In the other video, in the other car I should say, there's a lot of moss on the road so I gotta really be careful that I don't put this car in a drift. So this car's got all-wheel drive. This has got um, a mechanical steering, hydraulic steering, not electric, but it's power-assisted. It's a little bit more direct. We're very refined steering. It's very precise, very crisp. I have. Uh, I'm turning on the sport button right now, and that will open up the exhaust node a little bit and also tighten the springs. So the springs are now tightened. I have the. the Porsche uh, stability, active stability traction control on. And uh, I can definitely feel it's bumpier now, um, unlike the other car that didn't have any of that. And uh, it sits lower to the ground and it actually has uh, more of a race car feel to it, you know, if, if I'm being totally honest. You know, the top end, of course, of, you know, of all these cars are the GT cars, the GTSs. GT3s, GT2s. This car is not a base model, but it's surely not the highest end model either. But you can get so much car for the amount of money that you're willing to spend on one of these. You know, you can find these, and you know, if you're willing to spend a couple extra dollars, they're uh, they're great cars. As far as reliability is concerned, so we've had this car for four years. Um, knock on wood, this car has been really reliable. The only thing that I've had to replace, I had to replace tires because the tires that, came, that it came with were worn. 
Um, I had to do two oil changes on it. Let's see what else I've had to do. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, no alignment. I've had to do no, you know, I did a, m a minor service, change the spark plugs. Um, other than that, uh, yeah, not, not much. A great daily driver. You can drive it at normal speeds all day long. And like right now, there's an open area. Just punch it and uh, you're off to the races. And I, like I said before, at 55 miles per hour or so, the wing comes up and it adds extra downforce when you're at speed because you definitely need that extra amount of uh, push down on that on that rear engine lid. Unlike uh, the air cool car, it's not as squirrely. It's much more planted, much more precise, much more, you know, you feel that you're more in control of this car than you did the air cool car. But it's not to say that the air cool car is difficult to drive or scary or anything like that. It's not at all. It's just a completely different experience, you know. But I'm very happy right now with this car. This car is fantastic. It, it checks all the boxes. It's beautiful to look at. It drives nice. It's gone up in value. You know, it feels great ergonomically. It's got Apple CarPlay. It's got all of the modern conveniences that you can possibly want in a car. Power steering. It has a you know, beautiful sunroof that opens up. Alcantara ceiling. It's a nice place to be. And the sports seats, they hug you really well. The grip, they're hand stitched, they smell nice. It's just a wonderful automobile, you know. I mean, for the money that we spend on it, you know, it's, it's it was a, a great deal. If you're in the market for a 911, you know, choose either one. Choose the one, the best cars you can afford. You know, the best condition. Don't look, worry about mileage anymore. No, no one really cares about mileage. Um, you want these cars, you want cars that are, that are driven. You, want, you don't want something that's been in a you know, garage for years and years and it's, the engine's all gummed up. You want a car that's driven. So don't worry about mileage, but definitely make sure that it has no rust. You know, have a PPI done on it. Make sure you get an overrev over check. That's very important on manual cars. You know, Because at some point we're all going to go into these quiet little cars like in front of me here. And, uh, you know, where's the joy in that, right? So, thanks for watching, you guys. Uh, comment below if you like this video. Let me know which, what else you want to see in the future. Uh, I do have a really cool airplane video coming up, but I have to get permission from the Boeing company, my former employer, to publish it. So, I did the video, and I'm going to hopefully publish it here in another week or so after I get permission from the, uh, the legal team over there, and then uh, we'll show that. So, thanks for watching, you guys. I uh, really appreciate your support. By the way, for my 32 or 33 subscribers, thank you guys for subscribing to me. Please tell your friends. Uh, share with others. It's um, trying to keep this channel alive and doing everything I can to keep you guys entertaining and fun content. So by all means, subscribe if you can. So thanks for watching Realty Rides. We'll see you guys in the next ride. Bye.